Welcome back to another video. Uh, where can you buy soup in bulk? It's a joke, so it's not Costco. It's the stock market. <laughs> okay, here we go. We've got another video. This one is going to be about solving linear equations. Um, if you are in my class, oh, yep, if you're in my class, this is the first time that we're actually going to be solving anything. Okay, previously we're just simplifying. Uh, we're working with, yeah, basically simplifying. Now we're actually going to start solving. So I want you guys to pick up the keywords here. Solving means you need a value for unknown. All right, in other words, you're actually looking for an answer now. You're not just looking for some expression. You're looking for an actual x equals this, a equals 10, something like that. Uh, now, linear is just a fancy way to say it's a straight line. Uh, but really, we just it just means that if, if it's a linear equation, it means there's one solution. Okay, so there's no more than one solution, just one. And the other one is if we're talking about an equation, that means we have equals and we have something on both sides of that equals. Okay, it will only work if there's an equal sign and there's something on both sides. That's what we're looking for. Okay, the way that we do this is by using inverse or opposite operations to both sides of an equation. And I think the hardest part is knowing in which order to do things. Um, the way I like to talk about it is you kind of work from as far away from the unknown and then you work your way towards it. Um, that's how I like to think about it. But Again, solve means find the value of X. Okay, so it's no longer simplify, it is now solve. So I'm looking here, I wanna solve for X. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the inverse operation to the plus two, which is minus two. So my next line of working will say four X because that cancels out. Seven take away two is five. Now there's one more thing. This is technically four times X. So the opposite, the inverse of multiply would be divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by the four. Okay, that cancels out, which leaves me X equals to five on four. Uh, not a clean answer, but uh, rarely is in advanced mathematics. Okay, so there's your answer. X is five on four. We've got your answer. We've solved. Let's move on. Uh, if there are pronumerals on both sides, it takes a little bit more work. I like to think of it as if you're moving houses, I'd, I'd rather move with the house that's got less to the house that's got more. So I'm going to move this 2x over to the positive 4x. So the way I would do that is I would minus 2x, minus 2x. And by the time we kind of calculate 4x take away 2x is 2x. And I still have that plus 3. And then I've still got this. Be careful. It's not just 4. It's negative 4. Um, so immediately at this point here, we've got all the x's on one side. And that just makes life a little easier. And then I'm going to minus three to both sides. Minus three, minus three, that cancels out, leaving me with minus four, minus three is minus seven. And then from there, I'm just going to divide both sides by two. So it'll be negative seven over two, uh, leaving your answer in improper fraction form is completely fine uh, in advanced mathematics. Okay, now for this one here, I've got a fraction, the opposite, I wanna find X. So I just need to times two to both sides. Now, hopefully if you remember from your exercises, that times two is just, it just applies to the numerator. So it's gonna be four times two, which is eight on five. And then boom, got X on my own. One nice one marker. And this next one here, again, is gonna look a little bit tricky at first because all the X's are already on one side, but we've got this pesky little X on the denominator. It's kind of hard to solve. So what I would do is I would multiply both sides by that new denominator. So it's gonna be two bracket five X plus one and B. Don't be afraid to use brackets. They actually clean up your work more than you think. So I'm using the whole term is five X plus one. So I'm putting that in the bracket. And then on this side, I do the same thing as well. But the beauty is if I times it by 5x plus 1 on this side, it would just cancel that with my denominator, leaving me with 2x minus 3. And from here, uh, I've got a bracket. I should probably expand it. That becomes 10x plus 2. Haven't done anything on the left-hand side, so it stays as 2x minus 3. And then from here, similar to before, uh, I'm going to move to the side that's got more from the 2 to the 10. 
going to minus 2x to both sides, leaving me with 8x plus 2 equals to negative 3. And almost done. Minus 2 to both sides, 8x equals to minus 5. And then from there, x will equal to minus 5 divided by 8 is my solution. Okay. Now, this last one is probably the, I find it, it confuses students the most. The most disgusting part about this equation is that fraction. So I'm going to undo that fraction by multiplying through by three, both sides by three. Now, here's what a lot of people forget. I have to times every term by three, which means the X at the front also needs to be multiplied by three. If there was another term, you know, plus seven Y, that term also needs to be multiplied by three. Everything, every separate term needs to be multiplied through for it to work. So what's nice is that's going to cancel out with the denominator, leaving me with X minus two times three will give me minus six X times three will give me three X. And that's a positive X there. So cleaning things up a bit more, you get four X equals to minus six and then dividing both sides by four, you get minus six divided by four. And then that's just uh, simplified to negative three on two and that there will be your answer. One more, sometimes you will get a worded question. Uh, I'll give you an example. Dan is triple John's age. What is John a John's age when well, the sum of their ages is 48? Okay, so here's what we need to do. We want to find John's age. Okay, so we found out what we don't know, John's age. So what we're going to do is we're going to say John's age. If we don't know it, I'm going to let that equal to X. Okay, whatever you don't know, Label that as your unknown. Pick a letter you like and, and go for it. Now, they told us something about Dan's age. Dan's age is actually triple John's age. So in other words, triple just means times three. Or in this case, if it's X, then it will be three X, right? And now it says the sum. So the sum is just a fancy word to say plus. That means John John's age plus Dan's age should equal to 48. So in other words, x plus 3x should equal to 48. And at this point here, just collect your like terms, 4x equals to 48, x equals to 12. There's dividing both sides by four. And then from there, it's nice. You can answer the question. John's age is 12. That's it. So when John is 12, it looks like triple that will be 36. So Dan will be 36 and the sum of the ages will be 48. All right, there you go. There's another exercise. Enjoy and I'll catch you guys later.